Hey guys, Drifter here. Black Ops Cold War is officially out, so you can just download and play now. The gameplay you're seeing is from my early capture session and mostly search and destroy kind of stuff, which is unusual for me. And today I wanted to give you some beginner tips on Black Ops Cold War. And don't take this the wrong way that I'm saying that you're a beginner or bad, but it's a brand new game, so we're all kind of beginners in a way. And even if we played a lot of beta, well, a lot's changed since then. There have been some big changes and some things have been rebalanced. So I wanted to give all of you the best possible tips to avoid some mistakes and get a nice head start on the game on launch day. Tip number one is that your game will look infinitely better if you go into your options and turn off motion blur. It's under graphics on PC, but it may be under gameplay on console. Of note, there are two things you have to turn off. You have to turn off the gun motion blur and the world motion blur. This is usually on consoles to kind of hide frame rate dips, but in my opinion, it smudges all of your gameplay. It makes it more difficult to see enemies when you're doing things quickly and overall makes the game look uglier, so I will take the frame rate dips and turn that off. Number two is that if you're playing on a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, then you need to make sure you are using a new HDMI 2.1 cable. You can Google HDMI 2.1 cable to find out where to buy one, but they're usually labeled on Amazon as high speed or a high speed cable will at least be a USB 2.0, which is also compatible. And just whatever cable you're using, if it's less than three years old, that probably won't cut it. Your console should have come with a compatible cable though. On that same note, you need to make sure that your TV has a compatible HDMI 2.0 or 2.1 port, otherwise you won't be able to get 4K, 8K, or high frame rate. On top of that with your TV, uh, a lot of TVs these days are marketed as being 120 hertz, which means 120 FPS, which is glorious by the way, and I'm so happy that console players can experience this, but a lot of the TVs that say they're 120 hertz are actually sort of like an upsampled software smoothed version of that, that makes it look like 120 hertz. If that's the case, then that's actually not gonna take your signal very well. It's gonna kind of wash it a little bit, uh, smear it a little bit in my opinion. And in most cases, since it's being post-processed, it'll add a pretty significant input delay to your game. If your TV does not support a true, it will be called a native 120 hertz most of the time, you shouldn't use any sort of enhancement features or you're just gonna hurt your own reaction time. If you're playing on PC, one thing you can also do in terms of reaction time is you can enable NVIDIA Reflex. If you're playing on any new, I think it's a 2000 or 3000 series card, NVIDIA Reflex will minimize the amount of input delay between your mouse and monitor, which is an actual godsend. The next set of tips is all about which weapons you should level up first. So let's start off with tip number three. For assault rifles, you should probably focus on leveling the XM4 and AK-47. Even though these are relatively early unlocks, these two weapons seem to have the best overall performance, especially the XM4. It's relatively low recoil, relatively high damage, easy to master, and performs well in a lot of situations. The meta may change over time and people might find a true best AR, but this one is standout for simplicity and performance right now, and the AK-47 is only slightly behind it, a little bit more kick for a little bit more damage and range. Of note, the FAMAS is the final assault rifle that you'll unlock, and it has a super fast time to kill due to having a really fast rate of fire, but it is somewhat hard to control. I feel that this weapon has a lot of potential, but it's not going to be easy for a lot of players and you'll have to level it up to get certain attachments. In the submachine gun category, I think that leveling up the MP5 and Bison are going to be best if you want beefcake SMGs. The MP5 in my early play session seemed to be the overall best SMG, even beating out the old AK-74U, and honestly, if you kid it right, the MP5 is almost as good as an assault rifle in a lot of situations. The Bison is worth considering. It may be a little bit hard to use. The iron sights are quite nice. It kicks a little bit more than you would think, and it doesn't shoot quite as fast as the modern Warfare Bison, but the built-in giant magazine is lovely, it's almost a free attachment, and the overall range and time to kill is fairly competitive as well, so the Bison is worth your time. Tip number five is that you should respect the M1911. I personally have joined the 1911 gang after playing with Arcanaut, and it's it's shockingly good. You might even see me use it a little bit in today's video. The 1911 will absolutely put people to bed, tuck them in, and give them a glass of milk very, very quickly. I know that the Gallo 12 and the Hauer shotguns are more popular because they're simpler, but that 1911 should be respected. 
Tip number six, and this primarily has to do with snipers and marksman rifles, is that the Barrett 50 cal is an actual monster and fireteam dirty bomb, but it's less helpful in regular multiplayer, and this is because of the damage and speed trade-off. So the last sniper rifle you can unlock is a Barrett 50 cal sniper rifle due to its damage profile and its insane ballistics profile, and the fact that it comes with a thermal scope by default makes it very helpful in fireteam dirty bomb, where you need to shoot high health enemies that are often far away and often behind smoke but the downside is it, it, it handles like a tank it's incredibly slow multiplayer in this game not very slow like that and most of the maps don't really reward being slow you don't really have the option to sit on a hill and pick people off like in modern warfare 2019 so while the Barrett's cool it's probably not gonna be the best thing for 6v6 now when it comes to the marksman rifles everybody knows that the m16 is nasty a lot of people realize that they buffed the m16 and made it a very strong weapon in the final build of the game it's still a very strong weapon in the M16 is absolutely worth your time to consider. But another one, the last one you'll unlock, is the AUG rifle. Now, the AUG did not seem to have a fully automatic uh, ammo conversion or attachment for it. It shoots a three-round burst very similar to the M16. It has a very similar amount of damage and recoil. It has somewhat less range, though, which will get you a little bit less one-shot kills. However, the AUG does have a built-in scope. You don't have to put any attachments on the AUG to just have the beautiful, like, default manufactured AUG scope, which works just fine in a lot of situations situations so you can make some very efficient class setups there and kit your weapon with you know an extra attachment since you don't have to fool with scopes and I think it's worth your time to consider that. Tip number seven is that the game will definitely reward you for focusing on only leveling a few guns at a time. The weapons level at an incredibly slow pace and it takes a very long time to grind out all of the attachments but most importantly the later attachments are far superior to the early ones. You get quite a few different stocks and handles and grips and magazines that just don't have very many downsides or not downsides that aren't very significant when you consider their awesome upsides and some of them even have special abilities like the drop shot handle and different types of thermal sights or flashlights that can help you spot people you really get some strong attachments as you fully level a weapon so in my case when I first played the game I'm probably gonna fully level the mp5 and the xm4 first if I get that opportunity because I feel that I could almost super kit my weapon and make it more competitive almost perhaps an entirely new weapon compared to the others, so I think that you should focus on leveling one weapon at a time. Tip number eight is that you should respect the combat knife. Make kind of like the 1911, people don't think about it, people don't use it a whole lot. You should really consider carrying it. Not only do you run super fast with the combat knife and kill quickly, but you have quite a lot of health in this game, so you can sponge bullets relatively easy, but the combat knife just one hit stabs people and they're done. They're just totally gonzo, and that's great and there's really no downside to it. Black Ops Cold War is a game that you can very easily rush and get in people's faces with shotguns and pistols and shoot and melee combos, but on that same token, since you have the health and mobility to get close to people, if you get close to them with a knife, you might be surprised at how many of them you can kill in a row. So while it seems counterintuitive for a guy who does in depth to recommend stabbing people, I think that you could get, do a lot of work with it. Tip number nine is that I feel like a lot of players should take the time to look at the different types of field equipment, more specifically their shapes, so that you can easily identify them. I did play some games with totally new players from the press that, you know, they weren't there for the beta, they didn't quite know which, which field equipment was which. They knew it was enemy stuff and they knew they could shoot it, but they didn't think it really mattered a whole lot. And since they didn't differentiate between the different types of field equipment and instead ignored them, it got them killed a lot. I saw a lot of players throwing grenades directly into a trophy system that was right in their face because they thought it was like a, a jammer or a, a field microphone or something. I see a lot of people ignore jammers. I, I see a metric ton of people ignore the field microphone as if it's not gonna get them killed and put them on the radar. They do have a very similar look. Most of them are a box that puts on the ground with maybe one or two different shapes on the top, but the shapes are slightly different and being able to recognize them can help you save your equipment. It can help you save or stay on and off the radar and it can help you from getting gassed. Getting gassed is really brutal if you run into gas mines. In my opinion, breaking these is always helpful for your team. It gives you free points. It doesn't cost you very much and it prevents them from, I don't know, like having a SAM turret up that shoots down your UAV or something like that. Engineer is one of the default perks that you'll get. A lot of people have engineer on so you can see the red objects through the walls. And if you wanna really win games, taking out this equipment could be very critical for you. 
Tip number 10 is that your footsteps are loud. Like, seriously, they're loud. Keep that in mind. They've rebalanced the audio. They've done some different things with it. But the footsteps are, uh, mind the pun, still quite audible. They're not very hard to hear. And the directional audio in this game is very good as well. At least during beta, and I hope this continues during full launch, I was able to hear roughly how far away people were, what level they were on, above or below, and pretty much whatever direction they were on. So the directional audio was good enough to almost give me a radar ping in my head and I'm not even good at listening for footsteps so that really says something. Ninja also will not totally mute your footsteps. It, it's uh, it's still kind of a, a half compromise. People will still hear you. It just kind of cuts the range in half I would say. So as you sprint around the map taking objectives, pushing people or whatever and it seems like they have a sixth sense because they turned and hosed you, it's probably because it's very easy to listen to footsteps in this game. Tip number 11 is that some of the lower kill streaks are very useful for winning matches. They're not quite as flashy or cool or you know get as many kills, but when it comes to actually winning matches, especially in uh, Dom, uh, Hardpoint, and most of the Armada, not Armada modes, combined arms modes, they're very helpful. The two that I would like to point out is the number one, the lowest streak in the game, the flaming crossbow is actually quite powerful in the right hands. It's not very easy to use and it doesn't feel like a very hype weapon, but it's effectively a long range Molotov launcher that you can use to spam points and camping areas with and flush people out, which I think is a godsend. And if you've got good aim and you can, you know, time the projectiles right, you can get quite a few long range one shot kills with it. The predator missile, not predator missile, the cruise missile is very good too because it gives you a sort of bird's eye view of the map and lets you shoot multiple smaller missiles at people before slamming the big one down. You can do a similar thing and hit three areas at one time, perhaps faster with artillery, but you're kind of blind firing. You can't really see what you're shooting at. The Predator missile is a lot like the artillery, but you can see the enemies, which is good. And the hand cannon is just a better crossbow. It's a lot like the Annihilator. And the points on it aren't too high, so it's not terribly hard to unlock. And like some of the other weapons in this game, that will tuck an enemy into bed and give them a glass of milk. Tip number 12 is that if you want experience, combined arms is probably the way to go. I can't think of a mode offhand that's going to give you more total experience and grind not only your overall level but your attachments faster than combined arms. There's just a lot of enemies on the map, there's a lot of stuff to shoot down, there's a lot of equipment to kill, and a lot of objectives to take. This, in my opinion, would be my fast leveling mode. Fireteam Dirty Bomb has potential as well. You get a lot of points for doing things, and depending on how hectic the fight gets, there could be a lot of people to kill. But you can also waste a lot of time just walking around in this mode going nowhere, so keep that in mind. It depends on your kind of feel for it. If you maybe feel like a super aggressive Fireteam Dirty Bomb player, but I think most of you are going to get the fastest experience out of combined arms. But do keep in mind, if you just want to play zombies, zombies will also increase your overall level. Guys, that is all for today's video on beginner tips. In-depth is going to be starting soon. We're going to be starting some more hardcore testing, learning some things. And as we do, I'm going to have some much, much more specific tips. But I hope that all of these helped you, and I hope that they put you on the right path toward leveling and grinding and becoming the COD player you want to be. If this video was helpful, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.